I am very pleased to have Christine from Midnight Supply Company. Okay, this is, so if people are meeting you, you know, you're describing what you do, like how would you describe that? Yeah, so I guess a lot of my background has been working with the creative industries in Seattle, Washington, particularly in the music scene, Seattle hip hop. And for the past 10 years have found a lane into helping independent artists through merchandise and growing their brands through merchandise. And then eventually came on to the production side and now own a screen printing facility in Seattle, Washington. Right, there's a video clip I saw of you online. So you're talking about initially just being a real big fan of music. Like that's a super strong foundation for you. Yeah, my family, you know, I grew up being around them. They're all musicians, probably besides my sister who has no music abilities. So I grew up around it and, you know, I played percussion in bands since fifth grade. So Oh, watch out now. You, you know <laughs> we're going to have to put pictures of that in. Yeah, I, music has always been something that I've loved and I've been so passionate about it since I was young and didn't really know that what I was going to do with it. I knew that it was going to influence like my career and what I wanted to do in my life. So I sought out opportunities to work with studios and record labels and artists. And that's kind of how I got started in the local scene was just internships within the music community. and. Right. In the beginning, it was more of just like getting any type of experience in the music industry where it was, you know, doing social media for local groups. And then that's eventually turned into placing the orders for their merchandise that had to do with like singles and albums and tours. So I was actually, you know, a client of the print shops to begin with and then eventually turned into being the owner of a print shop. And now the musicians are the clients of my company. So it, everything has come full circle. Even recently, the place that I interned at has become one of our top clients at the print shop. So uh, wow. it's pretty, pretty exciting that something that happened 10 years is, is turning into one of our favorite accounts at the print shop. A couple questions there. That, that's super interesting. So for the people on my channel, they know or they might know that, that I owned a high volume screen printing shop for over three years. So we printed for Blizzard among other companies. But the interesting thing about your story is to have that love for music and then have it be uh, sort of translated into a vehicle with your business for screen printing is super interesting for me because as a creative at a certain point I was like man this is not exactly the best grind for me yeah, um, so yeah. I'm like I'm kind of like when you're talking about when you were kind of getting in there and just putting your work in and interning. Did you have a different focus where you think you were going to work in marketing? And was that aligned with what you were maybe doing in college? Or did you know that that might go towards owning a shop at all? Yeah, I mean, I guess when I first started to gain experience, I had no idea where I was going to end up. And I was such a sponge those first two years. Like I, all my internships were unpaid. I was in college. I was working a part-time job out of town to pay for my commute to the city. <laughs> and, you know, I studied marketing in college. And so I knew that that was kind of, you know, where my interests were. I just didn't know where exactly it was going to take me. And I wanted to experience so much, like in terms of event planning, throwing concerts, and then producing music videos and producing, you know, I guess it somehow came to the production of merchandise and taking pride in being the merch person for all of these artists at the shows and on the road. And, you know, it's kind of what led me to where I am. I went through all of those experiences and honed in really on the merchandise because that was what I could see was the void. You know, all these artists didn't want to deal with that part of the business. And it started to be something that was generating a bunch of income for them, especially when they weren't releasing music, we could continue to sell designs to bring in all the income and even convincing them like on tours how we had to be stocked because even if there were no guarantees to be paid after the show, we could always guarantee that we could sell a shirt or two to pay for gas or to pay for food, all the little things. But I saw that void and kind of gravitated towards that over the past decade and, and it's led me to where I'm at now. Wow, that's so interesting. So this question is a little nerdy, but important for maybe people on my channel. So was there a point where you're outsourcing it and you're like, I think I could run my own shop? You, oh, you were working at a shop. Is that what happened? I think I read that in your story. 
I, so I was working with shops, but I worked at this corporate company because I was at a record label for, you know, that was kind of where I landed. And I was like, I don't know how long this is going to last because how long are record labels lasting these days? It was an independent label in Seattle. And just one day the boss was like, the company's done and you guys are done here and you don't have a job starting right now. So wow. Yeah in shock about all of it and you know that day me and the accountant of the company just like sat back and we're like hey right, well <laughs> i don't know what to do but let's enjoy the day today us being in the office and that week you know i was very much in my grind and didn't know how am i gonna eat in the next week if i'm not getting paid or how am i gonna take care of these bills and it, my focus went straight to just merchandise and I reached out to one of the artists and I was like, we have to do a pop up. And he was down. So we pulled up to just the local park and brought all the inventory in the car and just lifted the trunk of the SUV and was selling. You know, he posted about it on social media and brought people out. And, and that sale alone, you know, carried me through that week. That same week, I'm looking online, LinkedIn, Indeed for any jobs that had to do with merchandise and ended up finding this company called CODIS Design in Seattle, mm -hmm. Washington. And there I was an account manager and was learning how to, you know, promotional products. So not just apparel, it was, it was everything in the promotional product industry and mm -hmm. doing it at such a large scale, you know, they had all of the collegiate market and breweries on lock and that was like their main thing. So I was just a, after being there for maybe eight months, I wasn't there very long, but someone that I had known through the music scene bought a local print shop and thought about me and hired me on to manage it. So that was kind of how I got into the position of working at a print shop was just through a connection that I had and he bought the shop and hired me on to manage it. And then two years after that, I bought it from them and the rest is history. <laughs> yes, it is. And so now being on the other end where you're offering services and production, I feel like through your story, you're like, this is part of my purpose here. Do you feel like that with your shop? De definitely. Like, That's you neat. know, everything that I've done has led up to me being here. And just like I was saying earlier, getting those accounts that were from my internship turning into clients now is just like everything's coming full circle. And even now, like, I still run the e-commerce websites for a bunch of these local musicians and that's a separate business. But since we moved the facility of the print shop, I was able to move that under the same roof. And so now both of my business are working simultaneously with each other and we're printing for some more of the stores and shipping upstairs. And that has branched out into, you know, working with accounts that are like, like skincare products. We don't necessarily print for them, but we're handling the fulfillment for their online store here as well. Oh, you're doing 3PL? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like ever since Printify and Printful, like the emergence of two like juggernauts like that, a lot of companies that are offering production, it's the next evolution yeah. of what yeah. a lot, every everything down to a micro brand is going to need that. So great to hear that. I, I'm thinking that's what happens next and to speak to someone that's doing it. Tell me about Gildan's uh, Board of Decorators because you are on it. So tell us about that program. So, I mean, when the pandemic started, I was looking for opportunities to, you know, get our name out there and all of our, you know, all of our orders were canceled all of a sudden. So I got heavy into the marketing of the print shop. And I think it was in the fall of 2020 when I found out I was selected. And then we, we met and got more information about the board of decorators and you know it has turned into something that I am so proud to be a part of now that we meet quarterly uh, and discuss different topics you know down to discussing Gildan's uh, inside tags and whether or not they should turn them all into tearaway labels tearaway. or yeah and now they have you know comfort colors and it was a discussion where everyone was like they're such a pain <laughs> we have to cut them out you know you guys being everyone a part of it being like a both a focus group yeah and yeah. like a like a trend council for yeah. Them yeah as well yeah they uh very much a focus group i feel like the 2021 board is full of just we're gonna be the greatest board that gilda never had but you know they also have us test new products and then they produce like a bunch of these videos like now I'm, I'm starting to be able to use my career to work with people i want to work with and it, it's so fun so tell me about 
some of the brands, organizations, musicians, or, or whatever kind of individuals you've worked with through your print company? Yeah, so a lot of my background, like I said, comes from the local music scene. But, you know, I interned back in the day with Sub Pop Records, which is was known for, you know, being influential in the grunge scene here in Seattle for decades. That company that that label has grown so much you know their branding is iconic they have a store in our airport and then they have a store downtown so a bunch of the stuff that have come through our shop i think is exciting that you know people are picking it up at the airport and then flying worldwide with stuff that came from msc and then uh, my other internship was with uh with macklemore and you know i stayed close with them still am very close with them like they have supported our business so much and you know, we are their North American printer. You know, it's kind of shifted from specifically trying to aim at musicians and touring musicians to more of like local cannabis industries. That's been big for us in the past few years as they were on our essential list in Washington state. And then outdoor activities like outdoor sports. So some of our bigger orders are for Union Bindings, which is a snowboard brand and Hyperlite, which is a wakeboard brand. And so when we are looking at all these new sales, it's just like what industries are thriving right now, which industries are not affected really by the pandemic. So that's kind of where a lot of the focus has been. But a lot of it is still working with local companies. Filson is a local company that makes, you know, heavy duty outerwear and bags. And they do collaborations like the one we're working on right now is with Popeye. So we're doing a bunch of Popeye prints. They have like the Popeye license? They do have the Popeye license. Um, okay. But the, not the fried chicken, the- The character, the animated character, yeah. Yeah, so we're doing a bunch of those. Oh, you got a ton of friends are like, oh, hook up, a, hook up an eight piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the chicken sandwich, actually. <laughs> yeah. Good lord. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna hit you with a little bit of an industry question and then we'll, we'll probably close it out. You know the gambit for production goes now from like crafters all the way to like massive production facilities. But for you, I, I love your story and where you're coming from because a lot of the people on my channel are, are entrepreneurs that might be starting with side hustle type stuff. But what for you in your business has been the difference that made the difference in terms of being successful, um, especially these last couple couple years that were, you know, volatile? Yeah, I mean, I always give credit to my network and the phrase, my network is my net worth. It, you know, now working on getting more sales for the print shop, but a lot of them are just inquiries that are coming to us and I haven't really been able to, or haven't really had to do like cold calls and all that type of stuff. But a lot of it has to do with my network and being genuine on our social media and building the brand that way. I mean, it's everything I've done has been built organically and I keep my head down and just work my ass off and rely on you know other people to speak my praises versus like doing it myself um, and that you know there's been a chain of networking and people that have gotten me into certain positions that have gotten me to where I am today. I have great mentors that have led me to where I'm at today and a lot of them have given me the connections that have built this business you know one of them brought me on to manage the business and it's just been constant work and on on taking care of these relationships and i feel like there's a majority of people starting out that want to exhaust your connects and your network and ask for favors and all that type of stuff but it's like what are you doing to support them like you're asking for so much like what are you going to do for them as well it's just a two-way thing i love everything you said <laughs> uh, the part the part about working your ass off that is very filipina of you <laughs> yeah the network is big. Network is big. If you ever want to plug anything, put it in front of 25,000 people. Just let me know. I appreciate um, it. Off rip, I was really excited about your story. Definitely to be a creative entrepreneur and have a, a like a woman-led minority-owned company is is super big, right? I mean, that's super big for me. I'm very I'm very excited about your story and and where it's gonna head to. So for other people to follow along your story, where's a good place for people? to catch you on uh, social media or what have you. Yeah, you can follow us at Midnight Supply Company on Instagram or at MSC Print House on Twitter. That's mostly where we're at. You can check out our website, mscprinthouse.com. But yep, follow us. Okay, guys, um, all of that information is going to be down below in the links. I want to thank Christine for giving us this time and sharing her amazing story with us. And we'll see you guys on the next video.